Michael Gunner is campaigning solely on his handling of the coronavirus crisis. Uh, it's pretty much the only thing he wants to talk about. All of his advertising has been around his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. All of the attack ads that the Labor Party have put out have been criticising uh, their political opponents, both the CLP and Territory Alliance, the two opposition parties, uh, about what they might have done differently, particularly in uh, relation to the closure of borders. Now, Michael Gunner's leadership was really in uh, a pretty bad place place uh, just five months ago. There was a by-election here on the 29th of February. Labor was absolutely whacked. It was a safe Labor seat, but they still saw a 21-point drop in their primary vote. They just held on to that seat on preferences. But since then, we've seen that coronavirus pandemic hit. We've seen the Chief Minister uh, handle that uh, crisis really well. I think even his harshest critics would say he's done a good job handling the coronavirus crisis. There are no active cases here in the Northern Territory. Those borders were closed early. Uh, and in many ways, life has been able to go on as normal for the people who live here in the Northern Territory. He has been accused, though, by his political opponents of politicising this pandemic and also of hiding during this election campaign. It's certainly been a small target strategy from the Chief Minister. He's only done one or two press conferences in the past couple of weeks, and that was a cer certainly a point uh, that the CLP leader, Leah Fnocchiaro, was keen to ram home today. I'm not surprised that we're not seeing much of the Chief Minister during this election campaign uh, because his record is indefensible. If he had something to say, uh, he would be out saying it. But of course, Territorians know that he has delivered the worst performing economy in the nation, a debt of $8.2 billion by the end of this financial year, 11,000 less jobs pre-COVID and of course high rates of crime. Uh, there's little wonder he's hiding because his record is appalling. Now, this question of the debt is an interesting one, Tom, certainly one that the country Liberal Party wants to talk about. There was just $1.8 billion in debt when Labor took over in 2016, although it was projected on the CLP's own forward estimates to go past $3 billion within a couple of years. But that number has now grown to $8.2 billion. Now, a lot of that is because of the coronavirus response, but we were still looking at a $5.5 billion debt before coronavirus hit. The Chief Minister, though, has hit back at his critics over that issue. He's asked both the CLP and Territory Alliance what it is that they would cut, what, they, what cuts they would make, what changes they would make to try and rein in that debt if they see it as such a problem. We know that when the CLP came to power in 2012, they were widely criticised for putting up power prices and for some of the cuts that it made, uh, including to the Education Department. Here's a bit of the Chief Minister, Michael Gunner, speaking about some of those issues during a radio debate on ABC this morning. They literally did the opposite of what they promised going to the 2012 election. They never told anyone before 2012 that they were going to sell TIO, the printing office, the port. They never told anyone they were going to jack up power prices by 30%. They never told anyone they were going to take funds from people out of education. They were not fair dinkum. Now, this is going to be an interesting uh, election for a few reasons, Tom. One, as you pointed out in your introduction, uh, the first election that's being held in the time of coronavirus here in Australia, but also... It's going to basically be a three-horse race here in the Northern Territory. The conservative side of politics has been split. Uh, Terry Mills is the man who led the CLP to victory in 2012. Uh, he was dumped as uh, Chief Minister, though, just seven months later, replaced by Adam Giles. He quit the parliament, came back as an independent and has since formed a new political party called Territory Alliance. Territory Alliance will contest... 21 of the 25 seats uh, at this upcoming election. Terry Mills has been keen, he was certainly keen today, to try to differentiate himself from both of the major parties. He's obviously had a bit of that dirt flung at him uh, from his time as the former CLP Chief Minister, particularly in relation to those power price uh, heights and some of the cuts that were made during that time. But he was keen to point out the differences between Territory Alliance and the two major parties when he spoke to the media today. You've got a CLP and a Labor uh, Party contesting to win the, the right to govern in the best interest of Territorians who are basically promising to do things exactly the same. They see this as a political problem. They see that what they need to say and do is to uh, try and win as much support as possible by scaring other people. 
The biggest point of difference for Territory Alliance, Tom, will be its policy position to ban onshore gas fracking if it wins the election. Both of the other major parties, the CLP and Territory Labor, both support the onshore gas industry. There was a moratorium lifted a couple of years ago, but it was an unpopular decision in many parts of the electorate, that decision uh, to allow fracking to go ahead. Territory Alliance has certainly been keen to tap into that, although it's probably done a little bit of damage to the, its leader, Terry Mills, along the way. He's been accused of flip-flop a given that he'd previously been a strong supporter of the onshore gas industry. So plenty of issues at play, including the coronavirus pandemic, just five days now until Territorians head to the polls.